Good day, my lovely listeners. You are listening to the Forty Orty Podcast. Tune in every week to explore inspiring stories and insightful information that dive headfirst into the world of autism and mental health. With all those tantalizing tongue twisters out of the way, let's get into the show. Today's podcast episode is proudly sponsored by Timo, the award winning app designed to support neurodivergent people just like yourself with routine and scheduling. Head to your app store and type TIIMO to learn more. Welcome back, loyal listeners. You are listening to the 40 Audi podcast. Today, it is a very strange day. It's been a combination of sunny and rainy and muggy outside. Today, we're going to be talking about something that actually I have a lot of experience in, in terms of my own research and my own experience. We're going to be talking about CBD. We'll look at how it benefits people, some of the possible drawbacks to it, and a few ways that you can use CBD and buy CBD for your own personal use. Of course, I and my guest are not registered medical doctors, so if you have any questions or queries or or concerns about using CBD, make sure that you check with your GP. Today I am joined by the founder of the CBD company, Plant Fire. She's working towards a diploma in CBD and medical cannabis. She's an autism parent and also an advocate for mental health. She's previously worked at the social group Fusion, where she supported children and teens with additional needs and autism. She's also worked within many local youth groups to help them access mainstream provisions. I'm joined by Stacy. Stacy, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you, Thomas? Not too bad. Had a bit of a strange day today. During lockdown, I've picked up an old game that I used to play when I was a teenager. It's called、um, RuneScape. Have you heard of it? <laughs> no. I mean, how, how, old, how old are you, Thomas? Because when you were a teenager, I was probably much older. So it's probably way after my time of still playing video games.、Um, it was, I'm 23 years old. Yeah, I was going to say my video game days were、um, like Sega Mega Drive, the very first Nintendo. Yeah, so, so by the time you were playing video games, I was probably way too old for doing that. <laughs> Well, I, I would say that I'm, I'm pretty too, too old to be playing RuneScape again. And <laughs> today I, was, I had a plan. I was, I was going to do this quest that was supposed to take me like an hour. And it ended up taking me about three hours and a half. So I've missed out、Goodness. on at least two, two hours <laughs> of editing time. So I, I need to slap, my, slap the back of my hand and make sure that I get it done today. Yeah, you'll have to work late now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, how, how are you doing? I'm good. We've just finished some isolation, so enjoying the freedom of being out again, eating out at a restaurant. But we're in a local lockdown here, so even though I'm allowed outside again, there's still、um, a lot of restrictions because we're in Liverpool, so we're on the highest tier at the minute. But it's just nice to be、uh, outside. So, yeah, I'm grateful today that I got to be outside the house. Yes, I can imagine. Why did you go into isolation? Was it. Some, someone in your family that contracted it or yourself?、Um, no, it was school. So actually, I didn't have to isolate, but there's only me and my son at home. So because he had to isolate, obviously, by proxy, that meant that I couldn't go anywhere because I can't leave him home alone, obviously. So yeah, he was sent home from school because a child had、um, tested positive. And then we were home for about four or five days. And we got another text to say another child had tested positive. And they added another four、oh. days to our sentence. Um, so, we did a bit of a sentence. A of a long, yeah, it felt like a sentence. Goodness me. It was tough. It was, t- it, was, it was tough on me this time around, but I think it was more tough on, on Carter, my son, this time around. He, he struggled. He, it really affected towards the end his mental health. And it concerns me that if 
we did have to do another stint of isolation, which is possible with him being in school and around kids that he just wouldn't cope with another one. So we are fingers crossed. Mm. We're going to be extra careful as much as we can so that we're not, we couldn't do that again. It was not fun in the slightest. <laughs> yeah. Cause I think that in sort of the grand scheme of things, I could cope quite well with sort of the, the full scale lockdowns and going into it and coming out of it. But I imagine that those routine changes on a, on a constant basis, yeah. or at least just, you know, small routine changes could destabilize. I think it's more, this time around with everyone else just carrying on with life, like in our immediate family and stuff, it, it was quite mm. difficult to be the only ones at home. So he was missing out on things like people's birthdays and oh. little things like that. So that he really just, and he'd only just got used to going back to school. So I think getting that taken away again, you know, adjusting to a new normal back at school and then literally being back home again. And um, that was the second time he's had to isolate since just he went back to school in September. So even though it was the shortest time, probably we've had to stay at home since the pandemic. It, we really struggled, both of us with the being at home so fingers crossed no stricter things are enforced i can imagine it it is probably quite tough definitely i think it's not it's not just autistic people that, that struggle with that stuff is is having to isolate and, and be on your own is yeah no definitely it's quite like uh contrary to the to the advice that people give for like depression and and mental health and yeah. stuff like that because you know it's hard, but you, you, you get yourself out to socialise and, and feel better. And then to have that confinement. <laughs> yeah. you got to think about, like, the, the elderly people as well who aren't to grips with the, the many forms of calls and video calls that you do over the internet. Yeah, no, that's, it's completely that true. Their contact with people must be, like, very, very, reduced. very limited. Yeah. There's a lot, of, um, a lot of worries around it. But I've also, I guess, I've also seen some positives. You know, like people picking up things that they they hadn't done before. Their their hobbies. They've yes, you know, developed definitely. a lot of sort of independent coping strategies and ways to entertain yourself. It's kind of like being a kid again, isn't it? You're not allowed to go outside. You know, <laughs> you're not allowed you're to do things that you're not allowed to do. What you're doing, yeah. Even for business, to be fair, <laughs> from a business point of view, we were sort of forced to think outside the box and you know really reassess mm. what we were doing and you know stuff like that and I think a lot of companies have been in the same position where they've sort of been forced to make changes or directions that they probably wouldn't have even thought about previously but now they have realized that they're quite beneficial to what they're doing so yeah there's there's a there's some positives in there as well so just to give everybody like a, a little bit of a background I know I did an intro and sort of um displayed out some information but could you give us a background to who you are, what you do for work, and you know some of, some of the things that you did um, before when you were working in youth groups? Yes, of course. So I'm a single mum to one gorgeous little boy. He's nine, and he was only recently diagnosed with autism, actually during lockdown. So we did it all over video, which was fun, I'll call it. But yeah, so mm. we've only had a recent diagnosis, but obviously, as most people will know, it, you, these things are quite apparent from quite a young age. So it's something we've we've lived with for quite some time. Yeah, I was made redundant last year from my job, so I was in my previous role for quite a while, but I've always wanted to work for myself. And with everything going on with my son, and we were looking at assessments and, you know, ADHD assessments and stuff, this was sort of the perfect opportunity for me to go, right, I've always wanted to work for myself. Let's 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 do it let's let's try now so I gave myself till November last year I was like right we finished give yourself to November see how things get on and if you've managed to make some headway with a business then great if not I can start looking for a role I knew I had payment from redundancy to keep me going so I knew that was good and yeah we just sort of flew with the CBD business it started out as a uh, retailers so we used to sell over a hundred different CBD products a hundred and yeah, I think it was actually more than that, 100 different lines. I got very excited with that, Jeez. you see. It was, I began to use <laughs> CBD for migraines and I used a vape. Didn't really sit well with me. It mm -hmm. worked really well, but I've never vaped before. So yeah, I thought I wanted to look at different options. And then I came across the drops. And when I used to go to the wholesalers, I'd been a kid in a sweet shop. You know, I was just totally in love with CBD. I loved the benefits. 
and that you could get it in anything. You name anything at all, and you could put CBD in Energy it. Energy so drinks, got a bit carried away, and I, shower and I, gel, <laughs> everything. Like I've seen mattresses, pillowcases. I'm still a bit confused about those actually because I'm not really sure how that would work. But and whether you have to like re redo your CBD yeah. in it, does it worn out? But that's a whole another topic. But yeah, so we just used to stock loads of different products. And it was through being in the industry that we sort of came across the fact that, one, it's so difficult to navigate. Even as a as someone who knew quite a lot about CBD, it was still quite confusing. Like, sometimes I'd have to read the packaging about four times and, and still not quite mm. understand what was in it or how much I should take or, you know, it was very, very confusing. Well, it's kind of weird because a lot of products that I've looked at, they... They use different labels. They'll do like per yes. milliliter and then the milliliters will be a bit off. And it's just like, I don't want to have to do maths. Yeah, <laughs> no one does. Like, this is what I was... So we we were just looking at stuff like that. It was like, hang on a minute. It says on the front one thing, but when you read the back, it says another thing. There was no sort of structure. You couldn't just go, okay, every brand has the same information on the label. Like you said, everyone was different. So it made it super confusing. Then... You know, it was like, do I need a bath bomb? Do I need a face cream? Do I need a muscle rub? Do I need drops? Do I need a drink? (laughs) You know, there were so many options that it was overwhelming. We gained some very loyal customers who bought from us. They could buy them products in lots of different places, but they bought from us because they liked us as a company and how we operated and the advice and the information we shared and how honest we were. You know, if someone messages me about CBD and asking, you know, for advice, I'm always hugely honest with them. I think if you're honest enough with people and, you know, share honest advice, then you will gain customers anyway. You know, um, I don't believe in the hard Mm. sell or pushing things. So we gained quite a loyal following in that way. And I just decided one day, I was just like, right, we need to make our own. Like, we need to make a product that's easy so people can just buy it without having to ask a million questions. Not that we mind the questions, but, you know, not everyone has the time to (laughs) do research online just to buy a product. Do you know what I mean? It's meant to be helping your life. and it was becoming a bit of a hindrance and that's also where our product stems from and we worked on them for a very very long time we work with a company who has their own farm so they have a farm in Scandinavia all the hemp is grown outside so it's slow grown in the sunshine no greenhouses no chemicals and then it's manufactured in very small batches we don't have to produce a huge amount of cbd at one time meaning if we don't like something we can change it very quickly um, if we want to yeah. improve something, we can change it very quickly because we haven't got that mass production going on. And we just fell in love with this company because they've got the same ethos as us. But yeah, going back, I've done lots of different roles over my life that have contributed to helping me be able to run Plant Fire the way I do. I've been a teaching assistant. I've studied law. I've worked as solicitors. I've done so many different roles. You know, I've worked in beauty. I've worked in business development. Could you tell us about your experience you know, with social groups and working within youth groups? I began my working career, as you would put it, with um, social services in Liverpool. And they decided to bring an initiative called Fusion, which was about young people and adults with additional needs uh, accessing mainstream social activities. What they found was that there was lots of things in place for there were specific groups, so there were specific sessions. If you wanted to go to a youth group, you could do between six and nine on a Tuesday. There was a special group, and it was all children with additional needs, and they could all go there at once. And, mm. you know, this is great. Like, I'm, I'm all for that. I'm a I'm really bad advocate for that. I think it's amazing. But a lot of these children um, maybe had, I mean, we don't like to use high function anymore, do we? But, you know, they were, they were perfectly capable to go along to a mainstream session. They just needed a little support to do so a little bit more understanding, a little bit of training, maybe just someone there on hand if they needed them. Um, So that's what we started to do. We started to work with children and young adults to get them into mainstream provisions and make sure that they could access it and they were with other children or young adults their age of all different abilities. That's quite an important thing to do because... Yes. You can kind of, you know, people people either go for the, they go for the black and white approach, like... We need to go in, in for all of the, the special needs divisions and, and provisions and stuff, or we need to just stick them in mainstream. mainstream. But yeah. what you were doing was kind of supporting like the middle them ground, to, yeah. yeah. So it was, it was making sure that they were able to access it, you know, and we, will, we would meet with their families and we would 
we would ask them about what things they would need to be able to access it. What can we do to get them into a provision? What do they like to do? Let's find them something that works. Um, and from that stemmed friendship groups. These were for young adults and teens who could go out and do what young adults and teens wanted to do. So go into the movies, go into Pizza Hut, you know, go and shopping. So we just, and it was just, they had control of it. We were there to support them. This wasn't like, this is what we're going to do. They would decide. We'd sit down every six weeks and we'd go, right, what do we want to do in the next six weeks? They'd decide some stuff they wanted to do, whether it was going over to Cheshire Oaks, whether it was just going out for dinner, going to McDonald's, you know, going to the park, anything that they wanted to do. And we just supported them to be able to do that. And That's and that great. was it. it. And it was, oh, I met, I've got such good memories of those times. I, I met some really amazing, amazing people. And I grew up with, my brother was terminally ill, so we had a lot of additional needs, a lot of medical oh. needs. Um, from being around him and at the hospital a lot, I was around children with additional needs and a lot of mm. physical needs then. So yeah. this to me was just normal, do you know what I mean? That was just like, it didn't phase me at all, even at quite a young age. I was only like my late teens, early 20s. Now when I think about that, that's pretty madness that I would be in wow. charge of so many other people. You know, it's it's quite a grown up job when I think of it. But I think I was a very, yeah. from how I'd grew up, I was sort of forced to grow up a little bit quicker than than yes. other, than other children. Yeah. You know, I I like to help out my mum and my dad, and you know, offer them support. This was just really natural to me. But now when I think about it, it's a little bit crazy. Like to yeah. to think that I was in such a a, a huge. It's very managerial, and yeah, I, I can imagine like, that. In, in in a lot of cases, people around that age would shy away from yeah, those like kind of roles because you've like, got to be in charge of people. <laughs> a lot of the workers, a lot of the staff that worked in Fusion and took part in the groups were only around my age, but they all came from backgrounds where they lived, they'd lived it themselves. They they worked at schools maybe, or they they had family members with autism or, you know, other physical or medical needs. So they, they were used to it, do you know what I mean? But what was nice then mm. was that the people and the young adults in the group weren't being traipsed around town with a 40-year-old guy, like, going, come on, yes. let's get over the road, do you know what I mean? <laughs> who wants to do that when they're yeah. a teenager? They don't. We were, we were more, yeah, we were, we were closer in age. So, you know, it made it acceptable to them. And that's what it was all about. It was about being fully accepted mm. and fully treated as an, I hate to say the word average, I'm doing air quotes here, but you know, just like an average adult, like anyone else would be able to do, you know, they wanted to do the same things. They just wanted to go and spend two hours in HMV when it existed, <laughs> listening to CDs yes. and, you know, all that type of stuff. That's all they wanted to do. They didn't want no special like key worker to take them out on a trip. They just wanted to hang out with the mates. When was your son diagnosed and did it have much of an effect on your life? Did you have to change a lot? Well, to be honest, we kind of already knew. So it didn't change our life at all because he was only diagnosed during lockdown. So at the minute we're struggling because we have gone through the diagnosis process. We've had this diagnosis, but we haven't had any follow-up appointments. We haven't been seen mm. by the ASD nurse. So we've got no support at this moment in time. We're sort of just like in a limbo at the minute, but it hasn't changed because of the background I came from. Like I said, I when Carter was struggling with things, I implemented things anyway that I'd learnt. So it, mm -hmm. it hasn't changed our life too much, the diagnosis at all, really. But it was tough to learn because I expected when we got a diagnosis, I suppose most people will be familiar with this. You f it's not an easy process. You fight for a long time to yes. get these things. It's, it's constant, constant. And I kind of felt like once I got that diagnosis that I'd be relieved. I thought, it's like you focus for so long, like getting them once we've got a diagnosis, once we've got a diagnosis and we got a diagnosis and nothing changed. And I was absolutely <laughs> devastated. I felt that's, so that's much That's the grief. point of it, isn't it? Yeah. I was, I was grieving. Diagnosis so you can get the, get the yeah. support for it. And we just, I remember it and I just couldn't stop crying. And I was thinking, this is ridiculous. Why am I upset? I knew this was coming. We already kind of knew this. We knew what the outcome was going to be. We actually wanted them to get the diagnosis so we can get the support. And we fought this for years and now I'm upset about it. It seemed really bizarre and it took, <laughs> I'd say about a good week for me to just get my head around it and go, right, what now? Like, what do we do now? And then it was the what now? Well, actually, there's not really much we can do because there's no one to speak to at the moment. We are still waiting to see the paediatrician. 
I didn't even know who to call. I was like, who do I even ask for help? Because I, I literally have that little clue because of everything mm. going on. Um, and I do understand that there's some people in a much, much worse position than us. So I am grateful that we are able to manage, but it, it, it sort of, COVID has taken its toll on us. Hmm. It, it's, 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 a very, it's a very weird one, a post that diagnosis. I suppose we are very fresh out of the diagnosis process and we probably haven't processed that very yeah. much right now. Yeah, I, t- I talked on the, on the podcast recently to a lady called Michelle Brogers. No, Brogers, <laughs> not Brogers, <laughs> B. Rogers. <laughs> she sort of makes a living off um, supporting parents who who are going for a diagnosis or have just got a diagnosis and she says that there is kind of that stage of where it's, it's kind of like a reality check and, and you yeah. sort of go through the stages of grief and it's very strange to hear it from like be, being an autistic adult myself but I can I can kind of understand because I mean even if you are looking looking for it you're trying to get it it's it it must be very strange to sort of see it written down in paper grounded in reality yeah <laughs> was he diagnosed with like asd asd1 i am they haven't actually said that they said they don't give a gradings anymore so they've just literally she really? said it's, it's just actually a autistic spectrum disorder or not kind of thing like oh. they don't use like well <laughs> yeah <laughs> how, so, how are you supposed to to know what level of ability they're going to have to to be independent yeah, and to I have, no have work idea. and stuff I that's, mean, these are questions, uh, yeah, that I probably wanted to be asked. But <laughs> obviously, at the time when she'd initially said it, I couldn't quite get my head around everything to ask. And now that it's been so long, I don't know who to ask. <laughs> you know, so we're at that point where we're like, oh, so we've been ringing like the community people, and, like maybe they'll be able to help, but we can't get in touch with them. And you know, we had an incident with self harm and recently, which was quite scary. And you know, again, no one to who do you reach out to? Do you know what I mean? It's always just this like we're stuck in limbo at the minute. That's a tough reality of yeah. being autistic. There's very high rates of mental health and addiction, and and I mean, I don't, I don't think that autism is necessarily a bad thing as it as a standalone thing. But no, the autism diagnosis, I guess, brings those extra possible elements up to a you know a higher rate. You know, it's it's got to be a bit nervy, you know, as a parent. Yeah, because like you said, it's. It, I suppose I'm a, I was a glutton because, for my own knowledge, because I already knew so much. So I already kind of knew a lot about the struggles that some of I've seen young adults had with with, it, with on the spectrum, and you know, so I could sort of see how this would affect them long term, which was quite scary. But also on on a positive note, I've also know a lot of young young adults and, and adults who will be oh God, they'll be actually grown ups now because, you know, <laughs> they'll be really old. <laughs> now I think of it, who were amazing and, you know, out there and they, they were I hate to where they use normal again, but you know, living and an, a normal like they're able to look after themselves. You know, it's not I think if I, I didn't have that experience, I could have c- catastrophized it a lot, do you know what I mean? And being like, oh yeah. my God, what's he going to be able to do? But mm-hmm. he's great. And, you know, this c- he's going to take over the world. He's got a I good little know. business mind on him. You know, <laughs> he's just like, oh God, if he took over the world, it'd just be everyone Will could play a Fortnite and be paid, paid in V-Bucks. Oh, that, that sounds all right, actually. Yeah, he loves it. <laughs> he can't wait to take over the business. He's like, I was trying to get him to do his maths homework when he was off and I was like, he was going, but mum, I'm going to take over your business. I don't need to go to school. And I was like, no, you do, because you still need to be able to know how to run a business and you need to know math. And he was going, I know math. And I was like, you do not know every math. And I gave, I was like, okay, I've just had an order of 100 bottles and this many bottles have been damaged in transit. This many, and given like a saw and he was like, yeah, I know the answer and just gave me the answer and just like totally ruined the point I was trying to make. And I was like, <laughs> and he was like, so I don't need to do my maths homework now, do I? I was like, no, you still need to do the maths homework. And he was like, but I've just told you I can do it. I was like, just made this situation 10 times worse. But yeah, trying to get him to focus on schoolwork is hard because he just wants to be involved in like, he just wants to make money basically. He's like, yeah, let's make, he wants to be rich. Do you know what I mean? Like Scrooge McDuck mm. rich, swimming in money. That's it's his like good, um... life goal basically. So yeah. High, I think that'll keep him motivated. Motivation, <laughs> yes. I suppose, which is good. Definitely. And he's going to spend it all on Fortnite, apparently. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to be the richest player on Fortnite. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He asks me for it, drives me insane. He's like, Mum, can I have some money f- to buy a skin? And I'm like, Mate, I haven't even got money to buy myself clothes. Like, I'm not buying a character <laughs> online. 
a hat <laughs> when I can't even buy a hat for myself. Uh, like that's ridiculous. Those, you just find what, what it they too called funny. those um, pe- uh, micro payments, micro transactions. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Shall we get into the, the, the meat of the podcast? Because I know we've we've been chatting for at least 40 minutes. Yes, <laughs> we obviously like to talk. <laughs> I know you've you've talked a little bit about your, your, your CBD company and um, your stuff at the start. So what I really want to ask is, you know, just to sort of set the, uh, set the scene on CBD. What is the difference between recreational marijuana, you know, the... The, the illegal thing that people are not allowed <laughs> yes. to do in the UK and CBD products. So basically, it's quite simple. CBD is mainly made from the hemp plant, although it can be made from the cannabis plant as well. And it has to have a level below 0.2% THC. So you will find your CBD products are your products without THC. Your cannabis products are usually very high in THC. THC is the component that makes you feel high, basically. So that's the the psycho. It gives the psychoactive effect to it. Whereas CBD does not have that. So here in the UK, CBD is classed as a food supplement only, but it has to have below the 0.2 percent THC levels. Anything higher than that is then classed as either medical grade or as an illegal, you know, drug. Basically, the the main difference, as as you said, is THC, but could you sort of uh, compare THC to CBD? There's a, there's a lot of stigma around, you know, hemp and, and cannabis yeah. and, and stuff like that. So, But what, what's the difference between the two? So your yeah, hemp plant has got hundreds of cannabinoids in it and CBD is one cannabis oil and then you've got your THC is another one. CBD is not going to give you a high feeling. So it will interact with your endocannabinoid system in your body and it will help to regulate various things. Whereas cannabis and with your your sort of THC in it, it still does the same as CBD, but it has the THC in which then gives you that high feeling. So it's not noticeable. So you're not going to take CBD and go, oh God, I feel so chilled. It's sort of an absence of feeling. Probably take it and you'll notice like in an hour you'll go, oh God, I, I actually don't feel stressed or I don't feel anxious right now or that pain isn't Mm. you know as prominent as it was before it's a lot more regular regular so it's it's a bit of a lack of a feeling so you're losing some feeling whereas whereas THC the THC is sort of giving you a feeling of being high and you know you will definitely know you've had THC if you have a if you have a high level of THC you will know the problem with that is if you take a lot of THC you can become very confused which can become very dangerous if you're sort of driving or if you're out walking alone and you know it can it can cause a lot of confusion and stuff like that it's definitely more of a lack of of something rather than it initiates a feeling if that makes sense yeah through my research the the main problems that have come up with THC is the paranoia if someone has a tendency towards any sort of paranoia type diagnosis or, or schizophrenia it can sometimes exacerbate that. And um, I know that also it's not, uh, it's not like it's not been shown to be sort of chemically sort of biologically addictive, but I know that, you know, just from, just from my experience at university that some people can get (laughs) quite heavily dependent on, on THC. Cause I know it, it does have a lot of beneficial effects. Yeah. Like you said, it's not addictive in itself. But people can become very dependent on the way it makes them feel. Um, Also, prolonged use of THC from using cannabis and stuff like that can sort of numb your receptors a little bit. So what happens is then the next time you use it, you need more to get the same feeling. Mm, Like a tolerance. Yeah, so you sort of become very tolerant to it. And then you will need, next time you'll need more to be able to get them feelings. And um, in terms of CBD... Could you, could you sort of explain, because I know that we have this very recently discovered but not very known about system that, that's only really been come to light recently due to CBD, the endocannabinoid system. Yeah. I know that from my research, there are like some endogenous endocannabinoids. So like 
anandamide is yeah you know if you if you go for a long run people usually say that you get a runner's high well, that's like that's the anandamide in your body accumulating yes, and exactly. it does it does activate that system and there's a there's a lot of different different ways that it, it is activated you know like in in pain and you know, some other areas that I probably shouldn't mention <laughs> on this <laughs> podcast so that it is it is quite quite an old and important system and it links into different yeah. areas of your your body like your digestive system your brain literally, literally everywhere to, there's... yeah it's linking up to so much so you see you've got two types of receptors you've got cbd1 receptors and cbd x cbd cb1 and cb2 receptors cb1 are in your central nervous systems and then your cb2 are going to be in like your skin your vital organs your immune system and it's it's just mm. crazy, and this is why CBD works so well. Is because the endocannabinoid system is is so vast, and your body does already produce, you know, its its own cannabinoids. You know, you release that when you're you're working out and stuff like that. So if you take CBD while you're working out, it's gonna it's gonna be more powerful at that time. A lot of people ask me about dosage and stuff, and this is the one of the reasons why it's a little bit difficult to give someone and say, right, this is specifically the dose you take, and this is the effect you'll get from it, because your body's already producing these already. So it depends what you're doing at the time that you take it, because your body will react in different ways depending on how much is already in your system, and then you're going to add to it with your CBD as well. And it's a lot, a lot to do with um, your metabolism of yeah, CBD. Yeah, there's, there's so many different your things. Your height and, and your your weight. Yeah, there's loads of um, research gender. at the minute that's been happening to think that some people could actually have a, a cannabinoid um, sort of deficiency. Yeah, they found that a lot of people with like fibromyalgia. Obviously, I'm not a doctor. These are just studies that I've I've read. People with fibromyalgia, migraines, their body seemed to produce less less cannabinoids than it needed to to work. So. So by adding in a, your CBD, you were sort of helping to balance that a little bit. And that's why probably people were getting such good um, results in, in easing the symptoms of migraine mm. and fibromyalgia and stuff. So these still, like you said, it's a very new system that we've come across. I mean, not new like last year, you know, it's, <laughs> but in the last, you know, it, it, it is fairly It's recently recent. been yeah. added to the human body. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We just like found, just put it in one day. But yeah, so there's still so much that we can learn from that. That we're, that we're learning at the minute where there's so many studies going on and it's so super interesting to know all these different things that we that we could be doing you're just adding to something that's already in your body and helping it to work a little bit more efficiently and the reason it can mm. do so many different things is because these receptors are in so many parts of your body so depending on where needs it that's where the cbd is going to go and, and do its job and so it's very different for for, for different people you know, if you're suffering with pain, then that's what's going to help it combat. If you're suffering with stress or anxiety, that's what it's going to help you to ease mm. in that sense as well. And I suppose that that sort of overarching range and variety of benefits give it a little bit of a kind of a, a snake oil exactly stigma around yeah. it. Yeah, and I was the same to be honest. Like when I first started using it, my nan used it before me for pain. And um, then I used it for migraines and, you know, I was amazed with it. And then I went and loads of research. I was like, how can it do so much? It confused me because I was like, hmm, that can't make sense because why can it just do so much? But now that I'm, you know, studying and really looking into that, I can see why it works so effectively and it makes perfect sense, really. This week, we've mm. been talking loads about skincare, you know, eczema, psoriasis, acne, you know, general anti-aging and how CBD interacts with the CB2 receptors in your skin. You know, it's helping with inflammation. Inflammation is one of the biggest causes of so many um, chronic illnesses and skin oh, conditions. There's a, there's a massive list of them. <laughs> yeah, so so by combating the, the inflammation, we can really help to ease stuff. We're trying to really put that information out there, not just give someone a list of benefits and say, there you go, that's why it's so great. We're giving them the reason yeah. why that it. it, it it's great for that benefit. It definitely is. Could you give us some benefits, the main benefits that people see from taking CBD? We have just actually completed a survey of our customers just from our new products. And it completely aligned with every other survey and study ever done on the benefits of CBD. And the top three things that came on top 
and um, that people were using it for were stress and anxiety, pain and sleep, and they were the greatest benefits. And even people who weren't looking for those as, as a benefit, so they may have bought it for, you know, helping with um, some inflammation in a knee or mm. something like that. They've been yeah. like, oh, now I'm sleeping great as well. You know, my, my sleep's improved, but they are probably your top three benefits. I'm, I'm just going to put this there. Like, this is in no way saying you can treat stress and anxiety or you can treat fibromyalgia or you can treat or cure, you know, migraines etc but yeah. it, it's only to help ease the symptoms it's going to help ease the symptoms if you stop taking cbd that is still going to be there it's not like you take it for a course of six months and you're going to be magically better that's not not what the the benefit is it's, it's management yeah if you take management it regularly rather than treatment a lot of people use it for skin so it's amazing for your skin I use it twice a day, every single day. I suffer with psoriasis. So especially if I get stressed, I will start to get psoriasis on my hairline. Just by popping that on, it can sort of reduce the inflammation, reduce the, reduce the redness. We've just had a lady yesterday tag us in a post. She's been using it with hair mask. So where hair mask is sitting mm. on her face, a lot of people will know they'll, they've started to get maybe spots or breakouts and stuff because of just having something we're not used to on our skin all the time. And yeah. she's put it on and literally it works so quickly because within like a day she could see the redness had gone the inflammation had gone you know wasn't as prominent the list of benefits is 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 endless it's endless but we have found that sleep stress anxiety and your pain relief are the top ones there but it's also great for things like you know as a pre-workout or a post-workout it gives you that extra boost and helps with muscle recovery um mm. you know i can imagine that if you if you finds the the task of going to the gym quite a an, an, an anxious thing like with with other people around yes. and stuff that cbd would probably help with that sort of social anxiety definitely there's been loads of studies done with um athletes for the same reason because obviously if coming up to an event or something yeah um it, it can be quite a stressful and and you know situation so not only does cbd help with energy levels and you know, muscle recovery and all that, but it helps bring them calm and stay focused then on what mm. they're meant to be doing rather than being distracted, you know, bit head all over the place. So it's time for a quick mention from our sponsors, Timo. If you love visual support in your scheduling, Timo is for you. The app was designed for people with ADHD and autism and helps empower users to schedule visual routines that work. Users say that Timo can help reduce stress and support executive function, which are both two things that I struggle with myself. Learn more at www.timoapp.com or just type in T-I-I-M-O into your search bar. Thank you so much to my Patreon supporters. Your support means the world. Anyway, let's get back into the show. The first time that I ever heard of CBD was I saw it like advertised in like a in like a vape shop, and I was like, "Hey, watch the TED Talk or something on it." And you know, it seemed to be quite big in America. It was the, about the time that I came back from Thailand, and I went in and I, I chatted to this dude, and he said that vaping cbd has been like the main thing that, that's helped him with social anxiety and that he, he would have struggled to maintain a conversation with his customers and 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 stuff like that and i do think that because cbd is is classified as a, a food supplement i definitely think it is something that that does supplement your life and definitely help help that little bit to try and get you down to a base baseline yeah exactly i also think that people should view it with a little bit more respect although it is a food supplement it is quite a active thing yeah definitely there's companies and stuff in america who have made medication for epilepsy and um, anxiety and stuff and they use aspects of the cannabis plant to, to treat people and they're, those are considered to be like medications and stuff so it's a little bit of a weird area like yeah, the and classification. Weird, yeah, and... <laughs> it comes a bit confusing for people and uncertain. And, you know, I've seen people selling CBD and giving, you know, advice on using it for cancer treatment. And, you know, 
I just don't think that as someone on Facebook, you should be given medical advice unless you're a medical professional. We, you have got to have a bit of respect for it, like you said, and 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 do your research. And mm-hmm. I'm here as part of an industry. I'm here as part of the CBD industry, and I really want this industry to do well, and I want this industry to be at a high standard. And to do that, we have to work together, and we have to sort of weed out those companies that are not are not being responsible, taking and, advantage of people. Yeah, and and we've all got to sort of work together on that. And I'm always sharing sort of information on, you know, how to read a certificate of analysis, how to know if you're buying from a reputable company, you know, just little things that people can use to then go, okay, I I know what I'm doing. There's a lot of aspects to it. Like I know that there there are different types of CBD products. You've got full spectrum, broad spectrum, isolate. Could you Give us a little bit of like cl- clarification yeah, on of course. what the difference is, because t- to a newcomer, that it, you know, a lot of information yeah, sometimes it, can be a bit overbearing. Yeah, you've you've not only got to choose a product, you've then you you're challenged with what milligram the quality, you know, what type of spectrum. <laughs> it, it is confusing. So you've got your full spectrum, and basically that's just it's got all of the different cannabinoids in. So you've got THC in there, but obviously the THC is very low, so it's got to be under the 0.2%. A lot of people really love full spectrum because they get sort of an entourage effect because the other cannabinoids in there are, you know, they still have really good qualities themselves. CBDG. And, you know, yeah. So they'll all do I've like different about. things themselves and have different properties themselves. So, you know, you get a sort of an entourage effect from that. And um, then you've got broad spectrum, which is very similar to full spectrum, only it's been purified a little bit more. It's a little bit more processed. And by processed, I don't mean that in a negative way, I just mean it's had the THC completely taken out of it. There should be no detectable THC within a broad spectrum, but you still will get a lot of the other cannabinoids in there. You don't get as many Mm -hmm. as you would in a full spectrum because, you know, it's being processed a little more. We stock both full spectrum and some broad spectrum products. And when you look at the specific analysis, there's very, very little difference between them. As a beginner, I wouldn't worry about that too much. What about isolates? isolated so basically they've literally isolated down the cbd so you're just getting your cbd content in that and there shouldn't be very Mm -hmm. much of of anything else really um and some people like that because they just want really focused cbd benefits it's personal preference really on what you like but as i said as a beginner even as not a beginner even as me if i take a full spectrum and a broad spectrum i could from of the same milligram from the same company, it's very rare that you will you will significantly feel a difference, Jeremy and your mobile. Yes. Wow, that's mm-hmm. so much different, Jeremy. You know I, mean? I suppose an, another question, another question that I kind of want to pitch, which I, I have done quite quite a bit of uh, extensive research and look into this because I know that these things called terpenes. Yes. You know, like in America, they have different strains of. CBD plants that they have and that each of yeah. them have. They'll have like different a different smells profile. And yeah. Yeah. And I know that these compounds, they're, they're found in different fruits and vegetables and they, they're they basically like volatile substances so that they sort of dissipate into the air so you can smell them. But they also, they've been shown to, as, as you said, to have sort of a, I guess, maybe not an entourage effect, but they change the, the effect of it. their own... Um, I don't like to call it healing qualities. I'm trying to think of the word, of a word for them, but you know, uh, some of them are like um, I can never pronounce the limone, limone, uh, limonene, limonene. There you go. You know that works really well with the CBD because it enhances um, like the inflammatory, the qualities, the properties of CBD. So that works really well with it. And there's lots of different ones, um, like so many, and everyone has a slightly different profile of properties that it can help with. Mm-hmm. Again, I think as a beginner, it's not something I would be thinking you need to take a huge amount of sort of notice of in the very, very beginning. But it is certainly once you're comfortable with CBD to do your research, it's super interesting. And if there's something you're using CBD for, there will definitely be um, a tip in that sort of complements what you're looking for mm. um in yeah. that and help to sort of accentuate the properties of the cbd i've tried a lot of different sort of cbd strains like uh i think it's something called Re- remedy or Charlotte's oh yes yes i know remedy web or, or something like that it's supposed to have a lot of terpenes that are to do with quelling anxiety and being more relaxing and 
I can sort of tell the difference. I I think it's very hard. It's it's kind of like <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> like having like wine connoisseurs or um, yeah, people yeah, who can taste like the definitely. the minute differences in that and stuff. It's super interesting, and they do. You know, there is things there, but that's why I was saying if you're a beginner, I wouldn't concern yourself too much. Yeah, but. As you become more used to it, it's definitely something to look into. It's definitely something to be of interest. Um, but you also do have to be careful because, you know, a lot of companies don't even really know that much about them. Do you know what I mean? And they're just like, oh, yeah, we should have some of these in it. Let's put it in and tell people that it's going to help <laughs> quell anxiety. And it does. But maybe if you read the certificate of analysis, the levels might be so minute that they're not actually going to make any difference. Do you know what I mean? But because it's in there, they can tell you it's in there and they're going to tell you all about yeah. the benefits of it being there. You know, it's like when, yeah, it's like if they're putting a really bad quality CBD out there with with virtually no CBD in it, they just put, but they can write about all the benefits of CBD, but that doesn't mean the product's going to do that because it's got such low levels in. I guess another one that, that people would find a bit difficult to understand is the milligrams, like the, the, the actual amount of CBD yes. or <laughs> or anything like that that's in um, a bottle or a vape or it a is tea hard. or yeah. like w- where would you start with someone who had never used CBD before? You don't know about the tolerance to it, how they're going to react to it. We have a rule um, called start low, go slow. You only need to start really low. So we only stock one strength of CBD, which is a thousand milligram. Now, the reason for that is you can take 0.25 mil of this and get X amount of CBD in it. You can up that dose. You can lower that dose. When we used to have like a 500, a 1000, a 2000, a 3000, a 5000, you know, it confused people because again, they didn't know where to start and people's minds automatically thought the more CBD, the better. And that's not always the case at all would be safe for pain so say for instance pain if we say that you need 0.25 milligram of cbd a day up to 25 milligram a day depending on your tolerance so you would start at 0.25 milligram (laughs) which is is so small like 0.25 milligram like in one dose of our cbd you get 16.6 milligram of cbd so you can see if you only needed to take 0.25 you're only going to take a couple of drops of that like you only need a small amount, but people automatically think they need a lot. And that is definitely not the case. Always start with the lowest. But what you've just got to be careful of a little bit, I wouldn't say be careful, but just so you know in your mind what you're buying, because it can be very confusing. Check the milligram on the front, but also check the mil- check the ingredients and make sure that's the actual amount in there. At one point, companies would write on the front, say thousands milligram, but when you turned it round, it was actually only 600 milligram in the bottle because it started out as a thousand milligram but then they put it in smaller bottles so now in that bottle there's only x amount does that make sense uh, it doesn't make sense yes yeah, really. so it's a lot about concentrations <laughs> yeah. takes me back to my chemistry days exactly it's so confusing it needs to have a thousand milligram in the bottle that's it like that's mm. the only way to do it otherwise it doesn't make any sense it was very very common for that to happen when you'd buy a 10 mil bottle that said a thousand milligram but actually it wouldn't have a whole thousand milligram in there it was very confusing. So mm. always just check the front, check the back to make sure you're getting the same amount of CBD. And check the certificate of analysis and it will tell you exactly on there how many milligram is in there. And that's all you want to know. Brilliant. So the next thing that the next topic that I wanted to talk about is more specific as opposed to this podcast. It's about CBD and autism. Yeah. I've seen a lot of videos on it on YouTube. I think Dan from the Aspie world made a, a video on it. I've made a video on CBD. Just to kind of give a background to my use of it, I've tried many different products. I've tried the tablets. I've tried these these different tablets that have like little <laughs> balls in that are supposed to increase the surface area. They didn't work. I've tried the drops. I've tried the vapes. Yeah. I'm taking it for anxiety. Like I, I've got quite... Se- severe anxiety I get very overwhelmed very quickly and and it's it's not you know it destabilizes my day so I've also had quite frequent panic attacks during night my anxiety seems to ramp up as it's getting towards about 10 o'clock and then it sort of dips down yeah. which is not good like if you're a working <laughs> person when you want to be going and to you bed. need to get a lot yeah. of sleep 
Yes, exactly. So the thing that helped the most was these CBD teas yes. that I tried. I quickly found as I was going through for his kind of rabbit hole of uh, CBD research that I am extremely intolerant to it. Like <laughs> it has such a good effect for me if I get the right amount, but I, it's literally the case where I, I can take it for like a couple of weeks and then I've got to kind of take like a, a, a break so that my tolerance yeah. can drop back down and, but it's it's had a lot of noticeable effects. It's it's made it easier to to socialize. It's um, quite often replaced the other unhealthy things that people do to relax, like yeah. alcohol. It's it's helped a lot with that. So I've I've had quite a quite a, a long sort of experience with CBD, and it's 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 more or less been quite beneficial to me. Not beneficial to my wallet. <laughs> Definitely makes life a little bit more tolerable for. For myself and my ability to function. So, what really what, what I wanted to to ask you off that was: Do you think that any aspect of CBD could be beneficial to someone on the the autistic spectrum, a diagnosed autistic adult yeah, or, or exactly. teen? Exactly. Um, and as I said before, there's a lot of things that CBD is really well known for helping with, which is stress, anxiety, sleep. I know with my son, he ha- finds it really hard to regulate his emotions. So his emotions can seem very extreme at times. Just come out of nowhere. He kind of loses that grip on them. And to have something that can sort of take the edge off that and bring a bit of calm, I can imagine is very, very beneficial in that state. I use it personally for my son. We don't sell to under 18s. And, you know, we don't advocate using it for children. But I personally, as a parent, it's something that we do really rely on to help bring him down and help him gain a little bit of control. We help use it for sleep. Obviously, he doesn't sleep too well. So if you're not sleeping very well, like you said, stress and anxiety, then it has Quite a knock on effect the next day. <laughs> you're less capable of dealing with stress and anxiety. So you've got your inability to regulate your emotions coupled with having no sleep and being sort of extra I don't like to call it grouchy but you know like that end of your tether already before you've even woke up out of bed do you know what I mean that's all gonna yeah gonna contribute to the rest of the day and how he's able to handle other other things that get thrown at him through life so that means that the slightest little thing then the next day is gonna seem like a huge thing and we could end up with a huge meltdown from the simplest of things because he's just unable to cope So if we can get things like a good night's sleep, helping to reduce stress, helping to regain a little bit of control when his emotions are up in the air, I think that's definitely a positive for people on the spectrum. As you said before, I don't think autism, I wouldn't want to cure his autism. That's who my son is. And and I don't know if you feel the same, that that's who you are. It's a personality. It's just part of your, of who you are. However, There are things that I would like to change for him and for a lot of other adults that struggle, young adults and teens, with the increase in stress and anxiety. You know, people on the spectrum have a shorter lifespan and the reason mostly is from lack of support with mental health and and things like that. These can really escalate and, you know, things like self-harm and stress. Stress and, and Yeah, sleep. like all of these things have a really adverse effect Diet. <laughs> on, on health. So to be able to take those things away, and not so much away, but help reduce those. So if we can help someone get a better night's sleep, if we can help someone feel a little bit calmer and a little bit less, you know, a little bit less stressed, if social situations can be engaged in, because a lot of people are under the impression if they've never been around people with autism, they think people with autism don't like to socialize and they don't want to make friends. And yeah. that's definitely not the case. Very common misconception. Yeah, it's, it's not that they don't want to. It's just a very difficult thing to do. My son, myself, he's always wanted friends and he does want to play. But what we used to find when he was little is he didn't know how to make those interactions. He didn't know how to initiate mm play with another child when he was like three and four he didn't know what to do and he wasn't at the same sort of capability as they was to join in the games that they were playing and he found that very difficult he also found it very difficult that they didn't follow rules 
and they didn't do things in the way in a game that should be done. So all of these things added to the fact that he would then pull back from socialising because he found it such a stressful thing to try and initiate. Do you, do you think that, that CBD would help a lot of people who struggle with social anxiety? So I'm, I'm sort of imagining my, my time at university, you know, alcohol was quite a big <laughs> yeah. help for me, for me going out and um, um, meeting people and, and making friends and going out on dates and stuff. Do you think that definitely maybe definitely just agree. using CBD could help? Yeah, because people will use that. alcohol like yourself. You probably did, and it just lowers your inhibitions a little bit. You don't overthink things as much, and you you can be a little bit calmer and relaxed. You're not so self conscious about the situation. So if you could do that with CBD, if you could feel calm enough and a little bit more in control and not so self conscious and self aware that you could enter a situation and you know speak to your friends then I think that's a massive plus do you know what I mean that's like a huge mm. a huge thing and you know we would never make statements like oh you can treat ASD because I don't think ASD needs treating or curing or anything like that but anxiety it's just the, yeah, the other stuff that comes along with it exactly <laughs> and these things aren't just like common to people on the spectrum everyone deals with this but obviously with ASD, these all these things are heightened, and you know these things are a little bit more extreme and a little bit harder to control. You know they have a lot more stresses um, than than maybe an average person would. So I think it's more, yeah, I think it's definitely you, to that. you know my child sells CBD to the teachers in school. He's definitely. Not good. <laughs> I think <laughs> you might have mentioned that people. last. Yeah, yeah he's like we had a chat. the teacher asked me for the name of the company. She was like, "Of course, I've been telling us." And I was like, "Oh my god, it's absolutely mortified." And I was like, "Oh my god, he's trying to get that money so he can take over the yeah, world." Yeah, he's like all over it. Even with one the other night, she had a headache and she took some CBD and he went, "Hey Nan, do you know if you didn't know my mum, you would still have a headache now?" <laughs> and she was like, yeah. "It's the same." Like, like that, there was a situation where my mum got she, her dog ran into her knee and she she sort of went over and she hurt her knee quite badly. And she was in a lot of pain. I was like, well, oh, just putting this out there, would you like to try some of my CBD tea? It will definitely help. And like literally about an hour after she'd had it, she was like, probably not good. I was like, mom, you need to stay in bed. But she, she, she got <laughs> up and it felt completely fine. And <laughs> it was a weird sort of, oh, it's a miracle kind of thing. It's like, yeah, it well, is. I told you it, it would just... help. <laughs> <laughs> it literally shocks me every time like people are so shocked because they expect it to take a while to work so they expect to be using it for weeks or months or you know to, to start feeling some effects so they're very very shocked when they use it one time and they feel the effect one time but that is also the thing that you do need to keep on top of it like you can't just take it if you stop using mm. it it will just stop having the effect like the effect only happens when you're taking it i think it peaks at around an hour and a half doesn't it so depending on how you take it I suppose how you've taken it so the things like sublingual so under your tongue the drops and vaping they work really quick so they're really rapid so you should feel them in sort of like I'd say 15 minutes to half an hour tops people usually feel the effects and then they sort of peak and then peter out a little bit you know which is great for like stress and anxiety because usually by that point you've calmed enough then to be okay if that makes sense I mean you've calmed down enough you've you've regained a little bit of control if you take it in orally so we have the capsules they take a little bit longer because obviously they've got to digest and get into your bloodstream via you know your organs off but the good thing about this is that is a little bit unknown is that it will actually stay in your system for a little bit longer so them compounds work for a little bit longer so although you're taking a little longer to get them you're going to feel the effects longer so Mm. that's why the cbd capsules are great for regular use so you know you could pop one of them or two every morning and that's gonna you know you're gonna feel the effects for a lot longer throughout the day so yeah it just depends what you're looking for i always say the drops and capsules work so well together because you've got your capsules which give you that sort of baseline and sort of a preventative type of thing where it can help keep you calm before you've got overly anxious or you know just with your general well-being before anything occurs and then you've got your drops that you can add in for or your vape. If you vape, we don't sell those, but you know, they are really common and really, you know, we really like them. You know, you can mm-hmm. use that if you are having a sudden episode of stress or anxiety or a sudden episode of a migraine or you feel some pain initially, you can take that then. 
And it'll be the same with the tea. When you're taking the tea, you might not feel the effects super quick, but you will feel them for probably a little bit longer than you would. Yeah. With like sleep. A CBD sleep is a wonderful sleep, I've got to say. That in combination with chamomile and valerian, that just just works. It is. (laughs) We've got some in the process at the minute, yeah, which is is chamomile and CBD, and it is delicious. And yeah, it just calms you enough for bed. You know, I'm a single parent, I've got a child, I've got a house to run, I'm running a business, which is a startup, so I'm doing predominantly the bulk of the work myself, yeah. which is a big job. So by the time I get in bed of the night, my brain hasn't quite got the memo that it's time to go to sleep. So I'll mm. often get in bed and be like, did I get that ready for school tomorrow? You know, did I put that meeting in the diary? And I find once I've had my CBD of a night that I can sort of relax enough to to switch off and get yes. a good night's sleep and I always yeah. surprise myself in the morning when I wake up and I'm like oh I've slept all night <laughs> from my own sort of research into autism and and CBD things like meltdowns can cause a lot of inflammation in in the brain it's like yeah. uh like how how epilepsy probably not as much as epilepsy but you, you still do have those sort of inflammatory uh, mediators that, that that can cause some some damage up there, and obviously because CBD is is an anti-inflammatory compound that can that can help a lot with with, the, with those kind of things. Yeah, but also G- G- GI tract disorders, which are, are also very highly common for autistic people. Yeah. It's I know that that can help a lot with the inflammation in the gut and you know things like sleep like a lot of kids are put on different tablets you know i'm on metazapine which is quite a heavy sedative and that to kind of get me to sleep and i used to be on melatonin and yeah you know like i think the difference between you know you you could you know in theory use a a benzodiazepine to (laughs) chill you out but you don't really want to (laughs) because it's addictive and it and it has a lot of consequences and you know, there's a lot of horror stories around those kind of things. Yeah, I know. But definitely. they just don't really happen with CBD, um, or as as far as as far as we know in 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 our research. Yeah, of, well, of that's it. it. That is the thing as well. You know, we are um, the extent it's being used. It's obviously this has been going back. You know, like it's one of the oldest medicines, cannabis. Do you know what I mean? Like it, this is mm. we've been using it as a medication unofficially for so many like ridiculous amount of years. But recently, there's been a big boom in CBD. So we are still getting a lot of studies done. There's still a lot of research and stuff to be done and gone to. But the initial outcomes are very, very positive. And like you said, with it being an anti-inflammatory, it's it works for so many things to help ease because inflammation in your body is just not good, <laughs> basically. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, like you said, it, it can unless, cause unless you're so many like- issues. You're having like an immune response to something. Sometimes that yeah. cannot be helpful, but <laughs> but you don't want cro- yeah, like it's chronic, isn't it? Right? So like this is what we were talking about um, a few weeks back. Stress and anxiety can cause inflammation, and yeah. you know, cr- so chronic stress can cause chronic illness and can cause lots of other issues. And you know, like you said, m- my son himself, he has always got pains in his stomach. He will, and it usually becomes after a very stressful day, he will have pains in his stomach. He becomes very, very pale. And it's having the stress and the anxiety and everything on top of each other is then manifests itself physically. You're bringing me back to my uh, my days at secondary school. <laughs> like, no, don't take me back there. <laughs> no, I don't oh, want to go. No, yeah, I don't want to go back. <laughs> it's so cruel. I look at his little face and he's drained of life. Like, we've been to Alton Towers for the day and, it's been so stressful for him. It's meant to be an enjoyable day out, but it ended up so stressful that he was it's ill. Hard. He looked he looked so ill. And that was like his body's mm. response to that stress of the day. I used to get sick a lot. Like I'd go home a lot with headaches and stomach aches because of Yeah. Or the the stress of school life, like all the bullies and the difficulty around, you know, all the sensory stuff. There's so many so different many, factors so that, things, that causes yeah. stress on a, on a constant basis. It's just the only things that work for me is CBD or alcohol or benzodiazepines. 
And I don't want to take benzodiazepines and I don't want to drink alcohol all the time. So it's it's kind of like a, a, a no-brainer for me personally. Not saying that everybody should, you know, jump on board that if you don't need it, but... Great option. Personally, yeah. it's it's just been so ridiculously impactful in my life. It's, it's hard not to... It's hard not to jump at, uh, jump at the opportunity to make a podcast on it, basically. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> it, it is, and it's, people will always be shocked. I'm, I'm a, obviously, I'm a lover of CBD. I came from using CBD myself to become an absolute advocate and using it for my son. And my mum, you should get my mum on here to talk about CBD. She's like, CBD is number one fan. I don't think there's <laughs> anything she doesn't use it for. I think if someone came in with like a missing arm, she'd just be like, put some CBD on it. Like she's just like she just she just thinks it's I'll like get rid a, of the information. Yeah, she's just like totally on board with it all. There's a lot of like social stigmas around it. Like if you say I'm using CBD, you know, some people may think, "Oh God, are you a drug user?" Or... Totally associated with that. Mm. We've had people asking me, like, what does the package come like? Can you tell from the outside? I'm like, it's me. <laughs> it's legal. <laughs> no, it's, it's literally just a food supplement. It's like, yeah, it's like, it's completely fine, I promise you. But, like, people do still have that, like, I think she had family staying with her, like, in-laws, and she was a little bit nervous about them knowing. But it's because of its association with cannabis, and it's, a, you know, people just, and I did it myself. When I first heard about CBD, it didn't even cross my mind to use it because I just associated it with getting high with people using it as a as a legal high basically that that was just my yeah. I never really gave it too much thought but that's what I thought it was until I tried it myself at least sort of yeah. a snake oil kind of thing just one of those health kicks that that, that the media yeah. latches on oh, another one's jumped on <laughs> yeah. yeah I do think that there, there are a lot of benefits for for people it's not it's not going to help everybody everybody you know like one of the funny things about it is that if you don't have a lot of stress and anxiety and you take it you're not going to feel more relaxed in a lot of cases unless you take an extreme amount yeah. of it i guess the last sort of question that i'd want to ask is you know around the downsides of cbd the the main downsides that i could sort of think about is the research you know although we do have research into it it's you know long term studies have not been We've not had the, the time to be fully creative. We, we, we need to do more research into it. And, and that is partially down to the government and the, the restrictions around marijuana and, and any sort of yep. research around anything to do with, with marijuana. <laughs> well, yeah, it was like in the States, they, they were doing a lot of research into sort of cannabis as a medical product, but the legislation at the time restricted yeah. them from using cannabis even for research purposes so it was a very gray area then because then how are you meant to know how things work if you're not actually allowed to use it so in that case they had to create a um, like synthetic cannabis oh. and thc and cbd yeah and that's a whole bag for, but then, <laughs> that's a whole yeah, bag of... but then what happened was they were oh. yeah because they had to do that just to get around the legislation yeah. um but then they found there was a lot of side effects that came mm. with synthetic cannabinoids that you didn't get from the natural plant i suppose that the main sort of synthetic cannabinoid that that people would know about is spice you know that that yes it runs rampant especially in manchester you know those packets of synthetic cannabis that people buy it's legal because they they keep coming out with different ones but some of them can like destroy people they can be like a thousand times more potent than any any normal marijuana and and... yeah that's the problem is that people will then associate they will take enough of spice or the synthetic as they would if they were taking normal cannabis yeah. because they're gonna get and they don't know how it's going to interact with their body or you know what the strength is on that and can end up getting themselves very in very dangerous situations and making themselves very very ill from it but yeah that's where most of that sort of came from was was sort of being used to for research basically because we we couldn't use a natural plant to complete that research it was a bit of a you know the legislation was there to protect people but mm. then in the end it just ended up creating something which was you know dangerous <laughs> ten times worse, and, basically yeah. Um, yeah so yeah it, it is a tough one but talking about the sort of drawbacks of cbd i think that is probably one of the biggest things is that we we haven't had 
you know, there's been enough research for it to be able to be a food yeah. supplement. So we know it's, you know, we know it's safe mm-hmm. and stuff, but there's so much more we need to know about it and so much more we need to know how to take it and dosage. And, you know, there's so much information that we, we will be able to find out in the future. Even that, you know, like most, most things that you will take, they'll say to you, right, these are common side effects. Mm-hmm. We have no real um, recorded set of side effects because there hasn't been enough reported side effects to to warrant anything mm. basically which is a good thing but also a negative because people get very nervous about the fact that they can't yeah. find what the side effects are but the fact is at the minute we don't have a list of side effects because there isn't enough recorded cases of of any side effects mm. well I, su- um, I suppose like to, to do that one of the side effects which which is is known about it would be things like drowsiness and you know if you take a take a high amount of it you could um it might be quite dangerous for you to drive or operate heavy machinery or that kind of stuff yeah so you would have to you would have to have taken quite a significant amount for for that to you know to to warrant like being but it would also probably contribute to the fact that if you're taking a full spectrum product that has maybe doesn't have lab tests on and has a higher than usual THC level and you were to take a lot of that then you are going to get that very high and drowsy feeling so it's the accumulation of the THC building up then in your system that's going to sort of mm. give that give yeah. that effect do you know what I mean so I guess one, one of one of the other the other things that are sort of that I've known about is interactions with with medication yeah I guess that is an also also an area that that needs to be researched but like, do you think that normal, regular GPs would know about what interactions CBD has? So whenever anyone asks us, because they do, it's probably a daily basis I get asked, they'll say, I'll take an XYZ, is it going to interact? And even if I have had someone on the same medication and they've not had any interactions, I still would not advise that person to take it. I would always still say, please speak to your GP. And we found that most people's GPs are quite quick in getting back to them. Like they've been able to just, you know, call them and say, hey, like, can I take CBD with this? And they've got an answer fairly quickly. But yeah, we do have to be careful. There is people of very specific types of medication that have had an interaction with CBD. So we do have to be careful and you do have to contact your GP to check them. What kind of medications do interact um, I don't know specifically. There was just a couple of cases within the US, um, and I think it was something to do with maybe the liver, uh, um, something some, like some that. Of the, uh, really... the enzymes, or yeah. So it's always best to check if you're getting any sort of treatment, even if it's not medication. But you know, we've had people who are getting IVF who are waiting for operations for certain things or dialysis, or you know, there's no harm in just checking with your GP first and going, "Am I okay to take this? This is not going to affect what." my treatment plan at all and as i said we've never really had anyone yeah. well we've had no one come back and not be able to but or on the other hand as well you know cbd being used so widely is only a fairly recent thing so more interactions might come to light as time goes on mm-hmm. we just don't know right now i guess that, that that's what makes it so difficult to get into cbd because there is just so much to it yeah you know, flying with CBD. Some countries, CBD is still illegal, so you need to check where you're going and make sure you're not taking your CBD product to a place that you <laughs> you yeah. shouldn't be taking it, basically. Yes. Do you know what I mean? So you've got... Yeah. There that is, is some, you know... <laughs> so we have information like this on the website. We don't give information on what places it's legal and illegal, even though we have a full list, because that can change in minutes. Do you know what I mean? They can change overnight, and... I would never, ever want to put someone at risk. The same with drug tests. People ask me a lot of the time, is this going to show up in a drug test? The drug test will pick up on THC levels. So if you're taking something that has got THC like in, full in even in minuscule amounts, I, I'm not going to stand here and put my hand on my heart and say to you, you'll be fine, don't worry. Like, you'll be totally cool if your work mm. is going to do a drug test. Like, I think that's something that you probably should just be open and honest with your workplace about and say, you know, I'm going to be using this product. Is that going to be an issue? Like, mm, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And just being completely honest about that. We do have new regulations coming in in March next year. 
which is a novel food license, which all CBD products need to have to stay on shelf after that, which I am wholly welcoming. It will come with standards. It will mean that the products that you find on the shelf have been thoroughly checked and they meet the standards of the FSA. Although, they, just to throw a span in the mix, the European Food Standards Agency, who initially was bringing about this sort of legislation, have done a bit of a U-turn. And they are thinking of keeping and putting CBD as a narcotic within Europe. Oh. However, in the UK, the, the Food Standards Agency have sort of said, no, we're not going to follow suit on that. And we're going to carry on with the plan for March next year for novel food applications. There's a lot of possibilities in it and there's a lot of way to come with yes. it. Yes. I'm just excited to be a part of it, really. It's, yeah. If you sat through uh, talking about CBD and you, you think that it will help and you, you, you're willing to go and ask your doctor and, and try it out, then you know I can't stop you from making your own mind up. I think you've got to wait up, see whether it's something that you want to do, see if, whether you can afford doing it, whether it works for you, whether there's areas in your life that could, could leave improvement. Maybe you've got an addiction or a problem with alcohol. Maybe CBD could help with that. I think it's, as we've mentioned many times in this podcast, it's always good to check with your GP. It's good to learn about it and it's good to sort of hear people's experiences, but make sure that you, you, you know, although it is a food supplement, um, it does have a lot of active compounds in it and it, yeah, it can be used in, in sort of a medical setting. So just, just make sure that you understand that. So that's that's all the questions that I wanted to ask, and it's been a long podcast, so Amazing. we'll have to uh, we'll have to cut and chop a little <laughs> I do bit. Apologize. No, it's fine. Don't worry about it. It's been lovely, <laughs> lovely to chat about CBD. I always jump at the opportunity to talk about it, as um, oh, me too. my girlfriend Anyone and to family listen, will know. I'm happy to talk. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm the same. Always chatting to someone about it. So um, we're at this the time of the podcast where we're going to sort of round it up and I know we've talked about quite a few things but for you personally which three main things do you think are the most useful pieces of advice or information to take away from this podcast I would say do your research you know we ourselves are trying to make CBD easy to use but just make sure you know the company that you're you're going to buy from you you know that the reputable you've seen reviews you've checked the certificate of analysis, you know, do, do your research into what you're buying. The second thing would definitely be start low and go slow. So it, we need to get out of that mindset of the biggest number is the best. You know, you need to start really small and gradually increase it till you find that sweet spot, as we like to say. The third would probably be don't be afraid. <laughs> it's not as scary as it sounds. There's a lot of information as we've talked about, but I'd say just go into it with an open mind to to know that, you know, if a company is out there selling it within the regulations and within the legislation that they need to, that it's it's safe for them to do so. So yeah, don't don't be scared of it. Brilliant. Thank you very much for those. Now it comes to the open question, the one that everybody loves. And this <laughs> I'm ask, asking you this as a mum to to an autistic child. Yeah. What does autism mean to you? I think it's pretty awesome. I think as a mum, it was probably something I dreaded to hear so much, but it's made me such an amazing little boy. Just wouldn't be who he was without without his autism. I, I don't think it's an illness or, you know, something like that. I just think it's something really, really cool about someone. Yeah, I think it's pretty awesome. That's what we like to call it. It's something pretty special and yeah, and I think he'll go far because of his autistic traits and and what they mean to him brilliant thank you very much for that i don't know i probably don't, don't need to keep reiterating this for for the people who uh, listen to all of the podcasts <laughs> but um everyone has their own opinion and experience and um it's 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 always nice to hear the kind of people's takes on it and yeah f- thank you very much for that so would you like to give out some links to your stuff anything that you want people to either follow you on or or check up yeah so 
You can find us on all social media. So we have loads of information over on Facebook, Instagram. Um, we'll soon be on Twitter. I was a bit too old for that. So someone has <laughs> come on board to, to take over that. And we're even on TikTok. And you can find us all under the exact same handle, which is Plant Fire, which is plant and then H-A-Y-A. Um, and that is also the name of the website, which has got loads of education and stuff like there over. So if you've listened to this today and you come and follow us on any of our socials, drop me a little message and say hi and let me know what you thought of, of this um, episode. I would love to chat with you. Brilliant. So if you want to check out the 40 OT podcast on any of the sites, it's available on YouTube. Spotify and Apple Podcasts, along with a whole host of different podcasting websites, all under the 40 OT Podcast. And if you want to check out my YouTube channel, maybe view the podcast over on there if you don't have any of the other apps, it's Asperger's Growth. And you can also view my documentary that I made, which is called Asperger's in Society. And it, it basically goes into the link between autism and mental health. Something that I did in my student years, my time at university, it was a final year project. So it's it's not the best quality, but I put a lot of work into it. And if you are a loyal podcast listener, I would I would definitely definitely encourage you to go over to there. If you want to stay up to date with my life, my advocacy work, all the other types of things, working with charities, working with the media. You can find all of those updates on my social medias, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at Asperger's Growth. Very easy to find, of course. So we have just hit the, (laughs) we've just hit the two hour mark. It's officially the longest (laughs) podcast that I've done in a long time. Um, But it's it's been lovely to chat to you. Thank you so much for coming on, Stacey. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm sorry for chewing your ear off. You've got a lot of editing to do now. <laughs> it's okay. It's better to have more content than no content. That's what I always say. Yeah, I, I always really appreciate anyone coming on to talk about their uh, their experiences, their uh, the knowledge, the topics. It's all very nice stuff to hear about, and um, overall, just increasing our knowledge of of the world and the ways that we can manage our mental health and the way that we can manage the the more negative sides to being autistic. I I really hope everybody has got something from this episode. It's something that, as I've said, I wanted to talk about for a long time and it's finally here. So uh, very pleased. Yay! (laughs) Anyway, I will let you go. Don't know what you're going to be doing, uh, but you know, like if if you if you want to uh, let me know what you're doing listening to this podcast, please email me. If you are on social media yourself, please send me a story, tag me in a story or a post. Tell me what you're doing listening to the listening to this podcast episode. I want to know. I want to know what what, you, what you're doing. <laughs> God. Right, I'm gonna leave you now. See you later, folks. Stay fresh. Stay keen. Stay motivated make sure you get yourself hydrated and get some good sleep and i'll see you in the next episode of the 40 podcast see you later